after the latest DJI firmware update on the DJI Mini 2, I have been out testing and I'm going to give you all the results of my findings coming right up. So it has been a hell of a long time since DJI actually gave us an update for the DJI Mini 2. I'm pretty certain the last firmware update was back in June of last year. So really it's been quite some time before they've actually updated anything really on this drone over and above app updates. But firmware updates are a bit more important guys because it's a firmware update that can actually affect the flight characteristics of a drone. App updates really don't do that, it's more firmware. So I have been out flying this drone just to test whether everything is working correctly and if there's any basically significant changes to the flight performance of this drone. And one thing I want to give you as a bit of a disclaimer right from the beginning of this video that obviously everything that I find in my videos are purely my own personal experience based on you know the knowledge and wealth of experience I've got flying these drones and all the tests that I do on this channel. If you are familiar with what I do on the channel, you're going to know already that I'm pretty thorough when I do test these things and I only like to really put something in a video if I feel there's something there to really say. I don't like to speculate unless I'm absolutely sure. Now, when I received notification of the firmware update, uh, as you can see by the notes, it's really nothing that significant, pretty general and vague. And these are the ones I really don't like because these are the ones where I really need to go out and test and really work at trying to find if there's anything wrong or if it's all good to go. Now, I actually posted on my community page uh, a, an issue that I found from the beginning that I felt that this drone was taking a little longer to actually pick up GPS satellites. Now, the trouble is, is because I've already updated this drone, I couldn't then go back to my previous firmware version um, to basically do a back-to-back -back test. So thanks to a good friend of the channel, Henrik Olsen at Tech Drone Media, he actually provided me with some footage that I'm going to be able to use in this video to be able to show whether there was actually a difference or not as to whether my hunch was actually correct. Now, if you don't know Henrik's channel, please do check it out. He does some absolutely epic stuff. And one of his most interesting videos he's done recently is a video on actually how drones work and how they actually fly. I found it absolutely fascinating. So please do go show him some support and check out that video. Now, after Henrik actually sent me that clip, I was able to analyze it in a lot more detail. And I found it actually quite interesting. And a couple of things I want to really point out from the beginning is this is all timed pretty much from Ted and the drone on to when it initially first shows your camera feed to when it actually picked up two points. Firstly, when it told us the home point has been registered, okay, um, and then what I've done is also extended that to how many equal satellites and how much how long it took. So just to show you this example then, the drone on the older firmware from initially turning it on and getting the camera feed, the time between we actually got the home point notification was around 30 seconds. It then took a couple of seconds later to jump up to 14 satellites. But interestingly, when we actually got that aircraft notification to say the home point would be registered and updated, we actually had 10 satellites at that point. Now, fast forward to the exact same location, nothing has changed, nothing at all, other than the fact that the firmware has been updated on the spot, okay, after a restart, basically on aircraft firmware version 01040000, even though we took a similar amount of time to get that updated uh, home point message it was actually only eight satellites when we got that rather than the 10 we have been accustomed to however um to basically test to see whether the new firmware was picking up satellites a little less than what um the old one was i've basically gone through this video and basically gone to the same point where they both picked up 14 satellites and it was actually quite incredible because whilst the old firmware the DJI Mini 2 took about 30, just over 30 seconds, basically. Well, it's, we don't have to be exact because the difference is quite big. On the new version uh, that's just been updated, it took over three minutes 
before we actually got the 14 satellites. So whilst this again was my personal observation on my own drone, just feeling that it took a little bit longer, asking a friend out for help who is obviously an established YouTuber um, and looking at his direct results which are not edited, they're just as they are. Um, yeah, that initial firmware, that, that initial update message does show about the same time, but we're actually getting less satellites and the same time it took to get the same number of satellites was 10 times longer on the new firmware. It's just a bit of an observation there. I also noticed a couple of little issues within the video as well um, that you're about to watch but again it's all personal experience let's roll that tape and just see what you think at the end right everybody welcome to the flight test for the new firmware for the DJI Mini 2 so just for housekeeping you can see we are on DJI Fly 1.5.10 version 1070 and if we pop back off there, go back and go to go fly and click the three dots, you will see we are on 1.4.0000 firmware. Now one thing to mention guys, straight off the bat, when you update firmware, all of your settings like these will likely actually reset. So if you do update your firmware, you're gonna to need to go in and you need to check all of your settings, safety settings, that they are all as they should be. Um, things like your front LED mode will have actually changed. Any gimbal settings might well have changed as well. So basically a, a firmware update is a full reset of your drone. So all of the settings that you may have changed within the DJI Fly app, you will need to go back in and check them. If you do already know that, brilliant, but of course this video has to cater for pretty much everybody. So even that I've been through these menus okay um, and just said that there's nothing new that I can see on non, no new features you may be asking yourself well why would there be any new features from a firmware update this is a firmware update after all not an app update and you're absolutely right however firmware updates and app updates usually go hand in hand for example if we take the DJI Mavic 3 um, basically we had a new DJI Fly app update um, they gave us the new features we had to have the firmware update so the drone knew how to use those new features but at the moment everything seems okay um, so let's go ahead and start our recording and then what I'm going to do is just take the drone up and just see what happens take off the home point has been updated please check it on the map now the reason why I'm flying in this location today is one because it's lovely that's for starters and two because when we upgraded to the last firmware update, which was 1.03.0000, I showed that there was a back-to-back -back difference in the actual um, signal strength quality between the two firmware updates. Um, and then I did a video of how to roll back. And unfortunately, that now is not working. Um, I've tested it last night to try and roll back, but sadly, that's not coming up as an option. The hack itself still works but the old uh, firmwares are not actually showing. So let's just go out for a little flight then and just see if we can see anything abnormal or if everything looks good or how our signal looks. We've got up to about 500 meters. I'm not going to go over there while there's cars crossing. So just flying back there then, um, I didn't seem to have any signal issues, which is always good. Let's fly over these units. But as you can see, using the compass indicator down at the bottom, I'm of course keeping the controller pointed at the drone at all times. But yeah, it's a lovely location to start flying from. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, got the, the amazing uh, Mini 2 gimbal tilt. Always good fun. Let's put that back into normal mode and it shouldn't do it. There we go. So if you're wondering what that uh, gimbal bank actually is, or gimbal tilt issue is, I actually covered it when the Mini 2 first came out. And it's basically to do with the fact that um, the aircraft can actually bank further than what uh, the gimbal can actually cope with. So at some point it just seems to reset. So as it stands, I must admit it seems okay to me um, I've seen a couple of people reporting that there has been some black screen issues or random gimbal shakes. If the random gimbal shake is the one I've just mentioned and showed you, that could be the reason why it's perfectly normal. And you saw that DJI did actually put a, a little pop-up warning on there um, to say that it might happen. 
but ultimately this is just such a nice location. Right guys, so you'll see the battery percentage just jump up slightly um, and this is basically because I've just been flying around emptying that battery and I've just landed, changed the battery and gone back up again just so I can get a thorough test and make sure I'm doing a proper decent flight with this. So uh, let's just stop that. Let's just take a, a photo. Oh, why was the drone descending then? <laughs> uh, did you see that guys? Um, when I stopped flying the drone. Oh, there we go. So it's not particularly that windy. Up into sport mode and just see what happens. Oh, there we go. That was a bit of a significant drop in height. I mean, it did come back up, but yeah, it's certainly moving around a fair bit out there. That's not as stable as what it usually is. I don't know if you can see that. Let's get a bit more height. I'm not too confident about that one now. First I've noticed that. There you go, look. I'm flying along and the drone is going up and down like hell. Look at that. Yeah. Don't really like that, guys. Pop that back into normal mode. Just to show that I'm facing the wind. So I'm just reversing backwards now, so we're getting up to about that top speed. It really isn't that strong at all. Like, not at all. We're getting a strong wind warning, but you can see the trees are barely moving. Not really. Okay, that's the gimbal tilt in normal mode. Obviously, when I'm testing for firmware, I'm testing things a bit more thoroughly and I'm making sure that I'm watching absolutely every parameter to make sure these are safe when I do these tests. But obviously, there is certain, certain circumstances. There is weather, um, you know, there is wind, there is atmosphere, etc, etc. But this is probably the most it has ever really not kept its position. Now, because just to take into account that wind warning let's just set the return to home at 40 meters well that will do right so let's just take a little flight out in sport mode see so, what i mean as i'm flying along it's really look at that height that is really getting battered all over and it's not it's really not that windy I'm not sure what's going on here guys um, but either way okay so we're 325 meters out give or take let's do a return to home go home now because my return to home height is less than my current height for safety the drone will actually remain at its current height so we can still yaw the aircraft while returning to home so let's just turn that away from the sun but as i've mentioned loads of times on my channel before guys i use return to home as a safety feature only so basically use it to get you home and once you're home and you can see the drone cancel your return to home and then land the drone manually so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to end the video there i think i've got seen enough and got enough um, i think everything you know that we've looked at so far you know is quite significant and I think that's more than enough uh, for us. So let's land the drone and then we'll pick it up in the studio. So there we have it. That was my test with the DJI Mini 2. And whilst I didn't see any significant issues with the drone and its signal at all myself, and of course, you know, I do revert back to my, all my experience and the amount of testing I do on these drones to bring you the content on my channel, I generally know what works where and what to expect. Now, even though I couldn't go back to the previous firmware, that seemed perfectly okay in terms of that. But of course, it did take quite a great number of time to actually pick up a decent number of satellites. Um, um, but I did notice a couple of significant changes, like I've said. Um, namely the wind warnings seem to be a lot more prominent in wind that I would never really think would pop up a wind warning um, and of course you know the fact that it did seem to be moving around a little bit more um, in the air that it doesn't normally um, and of course as I'm flying along 
for some reason it was gaining and losing altitude quite significantly. Again, nothing overly major, if I'm perfectly honest. Don't please don't say I think I'm being completely negative at all. I'm just reporting my findings and observations over and above what I've experienced previously. So guys, that wraps up the video. If you are interested in watching a bunch of other content on my channel, I can recommend these videos here, and I think you're gonna find them pretty useful, especially what the DJI Mini 2 is now capable of using third-party apps such as Litchi. Until next time, see you again soon.